So influenza and COVID, viruses have to get into your body. Now, viruses are totally inert particles. All they are is a bit of genetic material. They're absolutely tiny, and they're wrapped in a bit of protein, a bit of fat, and a bit of sugar. They're just to protect. Sounds yummy. Material. <laughs> yeah, they're tiny, tiny, tiny things. They're, they're biological. They're completely natural, except they can kill us. Now, basically, they can't move themselves around. That bacteria have, can have bacteria whole cells. You know, so we're talking about Staphylococcus or something. It's a cell. It, it can move. They often move itself around, do all sorts of things. Viruses can't. They're just purely inert. So they float around in the air or we get them injected into us in some way. Uh, the Zika virus was injected into us by a mosquito when it took a blood meal. Um, um, the noroviruses that cause diarrhea outbreaks on cruise ships, they come in via the mouth. They have to get in through either our mucous membranes. They're the, the types of cells that line the gut and the inside of our body, uh, which is to some extent outside because it's connecting directly with the the atmosphere and so, or, or with, uh, we're taking in food and, and, or they can get in th through the skin, but that's uh, smallpox would be a case like that perhaps, but basically they have to get in. So to get infected with COVID, you're most likely to breathe it in. Okay. So it'll come into your nose and it'll grow. It, it, will, it will then try to find uh, a molecule called ACE2. This is a, a molecule that's on the surface of many, many, many types of our cells throughout the body, and it's a, normally an important molecule in physiological function. But it's actually the receptor for the virus. The, the spike protein, the, the coronavirus has nine proteins in it. One on the surface is called the spike. It sticks up and it's got a crown-like top to it, which is why it's called a corona. Now, that corona stick spike wants to bind to that ACE2 molecule on a cell so it can get into the cell. Once that happens, it can get into the cell. And that's how viruses operate. They can't multiply themselves. They're totally inert. They have to just bump into a cell they can infect. And then they get into the cell, they take over the cell, and when one virus particle comes out, it'll make 100,000 copies, say. Now, maybe 90,000 of those are non-infectious, but maybe 10,000 are. So they come out and they can infect other cells in us. And they, when we breathe them out, they will infect other cells and other people. So it's all due, the virus gets into the cell, multiplies in the cell, gets out. And all it does in an evolutionary sense, the virus doesn't want to do anything. But if you think it in those terms, all it wants to do is maintain in nature by multiplying in cells and infecting other cells in us or in other people. And it has to infect cells in other people as well. So that's all it does. So the Delta variant that we're dealing with now is just a virus that multiplies a lot better than the viruses we first encountered. So if you think of, of it like an 800 metre foot race in the Olympics, the, the Wuhan virus from 19, for, from the, the early 20, 90, 2020 and late 2019, ran at about the same pace as an Olympic runner ran in 1902. You know, a lot of these guys were gentlemen. They were probably up drinking the night before and then they ran the race the next day, you know, and they didn't train except when they were at the Olympics. So, but what it's like now is an Olympic runner from 2020 and they run a hell of a lot faster. And this virus just runs faster. It just runs faster than the early strains. And that's why it's such a menace. Okay, so it's up here in the nose. That's where it multiplies initially. You don't feel much, but you may lose your sense of smell. That was one of the first things that happened in, uh, with, with the early strains of COVID particularly. You lose your sense of smell, probably because it grows in some cells that are involved with your, what we call the olfactory neurons. These are the smell, smell cells where we sense smell. And, it, and these cells that help to maintain them are called sustentacular cells. Complicated word, but it's basically just the cells around them that keeps them in good shape. And the reason that we probably lose smell is because the virus can infect those cells. So it's multiplying up here. So what it also does is like flu, it'll go further down into the lung. 
and then you get pneumonia. And that's what we saw first with, with this. We thought this is a pneumonia. It's like flu. It's a terrible pneumonia. It's different. It's bad. And we don't have any immunity to it in the population because we haven't seen it before. But it's kind of like that. So it gets into your lung and it causes what, we, what the people who do radiology, you know, the people who do imaging, they put you under one of those things and do this or they put you in front of an X-ray or something. It causes what I call ground glass lesions in the lung. That is the bits of the lung, instead of looking nice and open and, and, and with airways and all the rest of it, look like ground glass. Now, that's pretty horrible and you don't want that. And that can cause permanent damage. And so you can get permanent lung damage as in flu. And, and then what we then saw, of course, was that people are just gasping for oxygen. The people that are sick just aren't getting enough oxygen. And we have to have oxygen. We're an oxygen-breathing chemical machine, if you like. And if you don't have oxygen, you're gone. So basically, uh, you're, you're kind of drowning, basically. So, so that's what we thought initially. It's like that. It's causing bad damage to the lungs. People aren't getting enough oxygen, they're dying. But then we started to realise something else was going on. I think if I'm correct that the first person to pick this up was a pathologist who was doing postmortems in New York. And basically what we started to understand is that unlike flu, which is just a respiratory tract infection, this virus gets into our blood and goes around the body in the blood. Now, flu in human beings just doesn't normally do that. You can see it happen and people are very, very sick. You may find a bit of virus in the blood, but you don't normally. But this virus goes into the blood. It's what we call a viremic infection or a systemic infection. Now, once something gets into the blood, it's a way because all your body organs, everything in you is now exposed to that virus. So flu stays in the lung, only the cells in the lung are really damaged. You can get heart damage and stuff, but due to the host response more than anything else, that cytokine storm thing I talked about at the beginning. So the virus is in your blood, it's getting around your body. It can get into your heart. It can kill cells in your heart muscles. You get, you get cardiac damage. People who are diabetic are at great risk because their kidneys are in not great shape, can infect cells in your kidneys. And worst of all, it can infect cells in the lining of the blood vessels. Now, what that does is it makes those cells look bad and it causes clotting, what we call, it's a coagulopathy, blood clots. It causes blood clots. And you can get massive blood clots, which will cause heart attacks and stroke. You know, that's the cause of strokes and heart attacks. But this thing causes that. That's why when you hear of a young, fit person getting COVID, not being all that sick and suddenly dropping dead, they probably had a heart attack or a stroke or something. Okay, but, but even worse than that, if you look, in the, if you look at the, the lung, the lung sort of ends up in what we call the terminal alveoli, these are little sacs right at the end of the airway. And that's where the red blood cells that carry the carbon dioxide from our body, which we have to get rid of, exchange it for oxygen and then take it around the body to feed oxygen to the cells. So that's the, those terminal alveoli are enormously important. And there are very, very delicate blood vessels that, that interact with that, that mucous membrane. And those very delicate blood vessels were full of what we call microclots. It looked as though instead of just being full of red blood cells, they were full of what looked like bunches of grapes so that's why this is such a bad disease. And that blood phase, I think, is probably the basis of most long COVID. But we don't understand really what's happening there in the longer term.